Hey there, it's Monday, April 27th, here for Monday's devotional. I'm standing on our back deck and uh, glorying in the fact that I had done some yard work yesterday in the beautiful sunlight. It's a little bit cloudy today and you can hear the birds singing. And I'm here to talk a little bit uh, from Luke 6. Luke 6, uh, the very beginning, verses 1 through 11, uh, talks about Jesus' interaction with religious leaders over something that we don't really think about very much, and that's the Sabbath. The first interaction he has, people are noting that he's doing things on the Sabbath he shouldn't. And he says, hey, look, David went into the sanctuary and he ate the bread of the presence and he wasn't supposed to do that and he did that. And then he makes this proclamation. He says, the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. And then he has another interaction where there's a, a man who's in need of healing. He has a withered hand. And Jesus asked him, he says, is it, is it right to do good on the Sabbath? And people are a little bit taken back, the religious leaders. And then he goes ahead and heals the man's hand. Now for us, this doesn't seem like anything, but for that particular culture, it was a huge deal. And in fact, in modern Jewish culture, the Sabbath continues to be a huge deal. Because what had happened was the Sabbath was designated from creation as something that the the people of Israel to were engaged in. They were to work for six days, and on the seventh they were to rest, and they were to take their cue from God himself, who had rested on the seventh day. So, of course, what had happened was they had taken this blessing and made it into a command and a burden, which is what we tend to do. We tend to take things that God wants us to be blessed by, and we, we turn them into curses. So later, Jesus will say uh, the Sabbath was made for people, not people for the Sabbath. That is to say the Sabbath was given as a blessing, not as a curse, and people weren't made to conform to this set of rules and laws. In fact, you can even see this in our modern day and era. We have a safe at home law, and it's keeping us safe. We can see the curve flattening and it's keeping our people who are at risk, our people who will have uh, lung diseases and people who are elderly and the African American community, it's keeping them safe. But when you put a law into action, people tend to rebel against it. Unless you have a whole culture in which the law itself is fundamentally the way in which you are defined as being part of that people. So Jesus comes and he uh, isn't just healing on the Sabbath. He isn't just eating things on the Sabbath he's not supposed to. He's actually challenging the entire cultural standards there. And I'm just thinking about that uh, on a couple levels. First of all, uh, on the Sabbath level being given as a, a blessing. Now, I, I uh, raked up our yard yesterday and had a really nice time. And it was a Sunday. Sunday is oftentimes thought of as our Sabbath. And uh, I really enjoyed it. Put on my headphones. Let me ask you a question. Is that rest? When I was working, should I have been working? Well, it was rest for me because my normal work is to preach and to be a pastor. And so to get apart from that on a Sunday or a day which I usually designate as my day off, I take Fridays off. So I try to just not answer my emails, not answer my texts. It's not that I don't. It's not that I don't talk with people. It's just that it's it's better for me to be able to work for six days and to take that one day off. It, it helps bring me back and, and refreshes me. And so I think that one of the things that we should do in this time is to figure out a day of rest. Here's the thing about being safe at home. It can feel like every moment is kind of a, a vacation. But I was reading a friend this morning who talked about vacation in the time of the coronavirus as a kind of anti-vacation. Because even though we're staying at home and doing all these things, it doesn't feel like that because we don't feel free. We feel constricted and burdened. So taking the vacation uh, thing out of it, really talking about Sabbath, I think that it's important for us to think about how we can rest on particular days that will refresh us for the rest of the days 
and how that rest will also help us to renew our, our hope in God. You know, I, I've noticed that hope is something that people talk about a lot, but for followers of Jesus Christ, our hope is in Jesus Christ and Him alone. <laughs> and so it's not just hope and hope, it's really hope that draws us and drives us toward God. And the Sabbath really, really helps us in that. So that's, that's the first thing, you know, take a Sabbath rest and think about how that might work for you. The other part of that is to think about how it is that when we set up rules and laws, how they can be a blessing or a curse. It's in some ways just the human approach to it. So I hope that as we are obeying our our leaders, our state and federal leaders, that we see that as a blessing rather than a curse. But it's deep within the human psyche to take things that are meant to be blessings and to turn them into curses, which is what the ancient Jewish leaders had done. For, for a good reason. I mean, it was a, a command from God. It was something that they needed to do. Uh, but we can turn all sorts of things into bad things. So I hope this is a day that you will find blessing in the Lord as I found blessing in cleaning up my yard yesterday. And really, as I find blessing in being free in Christ. It's one of the great planks of our faith and it's one of the great uh, values of the Evangelical Covenant Church to see freedom in Christ. See that freedom in Christ is just exactly that. Freedom in Christ. The Lord bless you today.